There's so much to uh, thank God for. Amen. From the really big things. Amen. Like the Rose of Sharon that came to earth and got trampled. And, and from that, we get eternal life. That's big. Uh, I'm thankful that I, I recognize that. I'm thankful. Amen. For the greatest gift of all salvation. But folks, I thank God that he walks with me daily. That stuff that's rather small, especially in light of eternity, um, he cares about and helps me with. Amen? Um, amen. I want to thank God for hot water. <laughs> All right, amen. We've got hot water again. Amen. Maybe some of you hadn't noticed but the last two or three weeks, uh, you know, because the hot water tank went kerplunk. Um, and, uh, and, you know, the bigger the building, the bigger the stuff is that to address it. So, I, I, but today we have hot water. Amen. So for that, I'm thankful. Amen. I'm thankful, you guys, for the, a small, continuous, ongoing blessings of God to us as a congregation. Like the cleaning of the facility. Amen. I'm always glad to be able to let someone in and knowing that things are going to be pretty much in order. And some newcomer or some new person or even a repairman is going to come in and say, wow, wow, this is really nice. And then I realize again, wow, this is really nice. Amen. I thank God for the break in the weather today. Just feels a little refreshing, uh, you know, this it's July and August, folks. We got more heat to come. So just I enjoy the break in the weather today. Amen. Is there one person who really wants to testify? Amen. Before we pray, is there one person? I don't care if it's something real big or something real small, but you just want to give God thanks. Amen. Is there anyone? But I'm going to ask you to come up here and use the microphone because we want the people at home to hear it. Okay? So is there anyone at all who just feels that uh, they want to give God thanks? Because I could keep going on and on and on and on. Moise, come on up, buddy. Come on up. Moise, yeah, you gave him a chance, buddy. Right. Amen. 
Here you go, Rob. Amen, Robbie. Well, look, I'm not trying to be a ball hog or none of that, but. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. God is just that good, folks. Everybody should have put their hand up. And you could stand in here, praise God, love God with all that he has done for us thus far. I, I just think of uh, my son. And uh, once again, you guys know about him and uh, the struggle I had. And it's a struggle every day. But I can tell you, but God, my son's alive today. But your, your prayers all affected that. And I will I encourage you all, not only to pray for my son, pray for each other. Pray for this world. God hears it and he acts upon it. And I, I, I thank you, but my son has take, taken the next step. And that is to go into this halfway house, do a second program, and continue to change. So I want to just thank God and praise him because it's not about me. It's about his glory, his faithfulness. It's about my brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes. It's about the word of grace, the foundation Amen. of the world. Amen. It's about him saving lives. It's about a brother like Pastor Ben. Right. It's about Mark. It's about all you. Right. Pray. Don't be selfish. God hears it no matter what it is, how big or any, how little, but God never gives up. He never leaves you or forsake you. So I will say today, the next time you get an opportunity to get up here and Pastor Ben asks, is there something else? I want to see every hand raised. I don't care who you are. Get up because God deserves it. So I just praise you, God. I love you. And I thank you for this opportunity, what you're doing for my son. I thank you for what you're doing in me, in spite of me, Lord. Because, I'm, Lord, without you, I'm nothing, can do nothing. But all things are possible through Christ Jesus today. So I pray that you worship him. You meet with him. You give him your soul, your salvation. Your truly praise. Because he's worthy. There's nothing in the world that compare to the blood of the Lamb and Jesus Christ and God's love for us. So I would just say thank you and God bless you all and thank you. In the name of Jesus. Love you, Benny. Love you too, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Folks, and with that, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. All righty? Um, you take your needs. You know, when I say Hank, I know who I'm talking about. Amen. Uh, the email went out to pray for Curtis. Hope most of the ladies and maybe share it with your husbands or whatnot. But God knows who Curtis is. All righty. And uh, we continue uh, to pray um, for the big and the small. Amen. God help our, our world. Folks, pray that the uh, uh, pandemic situation uh, uh, worldwide gets better rather than worse. It's not over. So I thank God for our greater freedoms and how it has played out for us as a group. Okay? Amen. Jesus, in your precious name, oh Lord. So thankful, dear God, for Moise's testimony. Uh, Lord, as he just continues, dear God, to be thankful, Lord, to you. And praise you, dear God, for your work among his family. And uh, Lord, today they still need a touch. Lord, that's the way it is with all of our families. Amen, Lord. I do, Lord, pray for Hank. Lord, for Curtis. Uh, Lord, for some of these just individuals that I know. Uh, Lord, with uh, physical needs, health issues. Lord, I'm so thankful, God, that you hear us, that you hear me. That we can cast our cares upon you, certain that you care for us. Lord, that I can relinquish, Lord, these cares into your hands. Uh, Lord, without having to tell you what to do. Lord, I can express my heart's desire, but Lord, I express it as such. God, you know better than I know. Uh, Lord, we pray, dear Lord, for our world, our country, our community. Uh, Lord, in regards to uh, continuing to make uh, positive strides, dear God, regarding the uh, eradication, dear God, of, uh, of, the, of uh, COVID. Uh, uh, Lord, especially, Lord, as um, we're halfway through the summer, uh, Lord, and with school, uh, Lord, with uh, cooler weather and more and more people uh, gathering indoors, uh, Lord, I'm praying, dear God, in the name of Jesus Christ against uh, an increase, Lord. Savior, let those numbers keep decreasing, oh God. 
Lord, we pray for a Rev Tab or a Revival Tabernacle Youth Camp. Uh, Lord, I pray, dear God, that you would go uh, before us, not just in time, but Lord, into uh, Camp Mount Luther and, and uh, Savior, just prepare a, a special time, Lord, for those uh, kids, Lord, that will be present, Lord, and for the adults that will be present, Lord. Uh, Savior, you know the needs represented here. Lord, and it's all right for us to even ask for ourselves, uh, Lord, for, for situations, maybe health situations, financial, relational. Amen, dear God. What a privilege, oh Lord, to cast our cares on you. Lord, with that, we give you thanks for our time of worship, time of praise. Uh, Lord, we just ask, dear God, that you continue to be with us, dear God, through the remainder of this service. Have your way, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Folks, again, by way of reminder, uh, we're still just putting up the baskets in the back in that round table. Uh, if you've come prepared to give uh, unto the Lord, uh, you can just drop those off in, the, in, the, um, in those baskets. And uh, with that, I guess we'll start dismissing the classes, okay? Uh, hospitality did ask me to make an announcement, and that is that everyone should get a star as you go into the fellowship hall. Um, D, those stars, we, uh, as, the, as the adults leave now, D, or we could, or those, you know, the teachers, cause, okay, uh, you want to have a star, your star will have a name. That is who you're going to try to locate uh, during the fellowship time and introduce yourself. Okay? So with that, let us uh, dismiss uh, the youngest of our uh, children or nursery classes, Alrighty and Candace and Nicole. We'll... Uh, Folks, let, let me, as they're, as they're leaving, let me um, say how, how glad I am that most of you have grown up. <laughs> I want to acknowledge and thank you for your maturity <laughs> and your growth. As I have been dealing with our little grandchildren and have been reminded uh, how uh, self-centered they can be. <laughs> In a, a cute way, but that's their age group. And it requires a lot of work and a lot of accommodating all the time. And so I thank you for growing up some. <laughs> With that, we're going to uh, dismiss our elementary school age kids and their teachers. Amen. And uh, finally, our, our youth and their teachers. Okay, and uh, folks, it's, uh, it's interesting to, you know, to, to be able to behold, you know, not, not just the physical change of our kids, but, you know, that um, developmental growth, and uh, sometimes we can get a little frustrated that they're not yet what we are, but folks, aren't you sometimes disappointed in yourself, right, that you're not yet all that you thought you have, a, you know, thought that you are, amen, something reminds you that you're still dealing with your growth, amen, amen. All righty, with that, you guys, I want you to turn with me to the book of Acts, uh, the book of Acts, uh, Acts of the Apostles, and uh, to chapter 2 which most of you right away recognize is what's usually referred to as the birth of the church, Christian church. And uh, last several verses of that chapter. And uh, as we take a look at the early church, in other words, this is the birthday of the church, Acts chapter 2. Uh, when the Holy Spirit came, and and on that day, as they questioned the phenomenon around the uh, 
initial coming of the Holy Spirit. Peter took the opportunity to stand and to preach. Most, most of Acts chapter 2 is a message of Peter regarding Jesus Christ. It's an, it's an awesome message, a, a salvation message, really. And verse 41, as he finished up his sermon, verse 41 lets us know those who accepted his message were baptized. Folks, I don't know how many people were there, but about 3,000 were added to their number that day. So I don't know how many were there listening, but I do know this, that those who accepted the message uh, immediately were baptized. Uh, that is our practice. Uh, we believe that all who have accepted the message of Jesus Christ ought to be immediately identified with Jesus Christ in baptism. Just a public declaration of their heart condition, of their um, stance, their changed stance regarding Jesus Christ. It's the pattern of the church. It happened even on the first day of the church. Uh, I'm sure afterwards they had many Bible studies about what, all, what it all meant. But coupled with their belief was the practice of baptism. So for us, anyone who believes, you know, I don't want to have to answer the question. Well, what if I believe, but I've never been baptized? I don't want to have to answer that question. That is not a biblical question. That is the fault of whoever brought you to Christ and uh, prayed with you, not immediately telling you, and now you ought to be baptized. Amen. But on that day... About 3,000 people accepted the message and consequently were baptized and were added clearly uh, to the number of the believers. Verse 42, they devoted themselves. It would have been those who um, already had believed, uh, the, uh, the 120 in the upper room. And the 3,000 that were joined to them they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And all the believers were together and had everything in common. And they sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Folks, that's the early church at its best. It is a beautiful picture. A amen. Let me just uh, point out some things here. Um, they are devoted to God's word and his instructions. They are devoted to the idea of fellowship. And a great theologian explained fellowship as two fellows in a ship. That's what fellowship is. It's more than one together. Close proximity. Um, the breaking of bread, which we might call a version of communion. Uh, 
boy, that beautiful reminder as, as Andy uh, spoke to us several weeks ago about from the past and the present and into the future, communion with God and with one another. And they were devoted to praying. Folks, and I know there's a lot of styles and there's a lot of um, different practices that you've been exposed to. Maybe, maybe you've been exposed just to one. All right. But uh, prayer is something that you always want to actively involve yourself with. It may be one person praying out loud if that's what you're accustomed to. But you ought to be earnestly involved in your heart and in your mind as they pray. Uh, for those of us who are from a tradition where everyone prays simultaneous. Um, likewise, the important thing is to involve your heart and your mind earnestly. In the early church, on the first couple days anyway, we're very much in tune with that practice. So devoted to God's word, devoted to fellowship, devoted to communion, devoted to prayer. And uh, it says that everyone was filled with awe. Uh, folks, uh, the... the the main thing in Christianity is not the work that we do, but the relationships we maintain and the atmosphere produced by those relationships. I, mean, I, I hope you know the genuineness of, of walking with God and walking with others as fellow believers to where um, you're in awe of God's working among you. The early church was. And all the believers were together, had everything in common. There was a togetherness and a commonality that could probably be felt in the very atmosphere, but was also tangibly um, produced by that attitude and that approach and that Willingness to let God have his way. Uh, it describes a tremendous generosity. As they sold their properties. Folks, there was a, a, a selfless sharing. And there is no universal mandate in any of God's word. Uh, uh, specifically towards that practice. But there is plenty of call for our inward being to where God can speak to us and, 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 uh, and, and talk to us even about our possessions. And we're not uh, hoarding people. It's part of the God's work in us. Andy, stop smiling. <laughs> Folks, I, you know, I'm not talking about, because all of us have stuff, right? But all of our stuff belongs to him. For him to direct and to guide us. Amen? And that's the way it was in that early church. And it was uh, beautifully demonstrated in that, um, uh, you know, in their, in their particular number, there, there was no one with need. And this was an every day, as you read, you know, how they gathered at the temple every day and how they broke bread in their homes and, and how they were uh, ate, ate together with, with glad and sincere hearts. Um, you guys, the, the indication is that it was an everyday experience and an everywhere experience. Uh, I like... I like sharing and reminding myself and others of that concept. Folks, God is not a Sunday experience, as Justin preached many 
months ago, years ago at this point. Beyond the Sunday experience. I don't want to do Sunday church with people. I want to do life with people. Because God wants to do life with us. I'm thankful for our Sunday experience. They had no problem, you know, gathering at a specific place called the temple and that place being designated. As, but it was also in homes. Uh, yeah, there's nothing that I enjoy hearing as much as uh, how uh, someone invites someone to, to, to an outing or to a home. You know, something not put together necessarily by the church collectively, but just because it's in your heart and because you recognize it ought to be every day, everywhere. That Christ is being expressed through us. That's the early church. To the point that they are uh, praising God, and this is the outcome of it all, that God is being praised and the uh, community is being impacted. Amen. That's the outcome. And, and, and consequently, there was a vibrancy and a growing uh, 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 aspect. Because you know what? That's an inviting environment. Amen. Amen. Even outsiders would have looked and said, man, that's, that's nice. That's good. And, you know, I can find myself, you know, uh, partaking there. You guys, I, I want to um, talk uh, for you just for a couple minutes on uh, what ought to be our heart's desire as individual believers. And that is that uh, we would pray, come union. Come union. And come unity. And I realize that's a play on words. Because um, it looks, it sounds like almost communion and community. But folks, there ought to be something in us as fellow believers that while we are thankful for what we have, and because we have this relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ, that we acknowledge it binds us together with a bunch of other believers. Amen. It's interesting because when we tell someone about giving their life to Christ, we, we, we tend to focus on their changed relationship with God. And, um, and we tell them that they become a child of God. Right? I, I enjoy telling someone that, that by their faith, they are now a child of God. Folks, I, I'm so thankful when someone expressed that to me in my teenage years. That I could belong. I could belong to God. That he would see me as his child and take care of me. You know what we rarely will say at that point is, and oh yeah, by the way, He's already got a bunch of other kids. And consequently, if you accept him as your heavenly father, uh, it's a package deal. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, it may be that we're afraid to scare them away. Like one person supposedly said, oh, I love God. It's his kids I can't stand. <laughs> Folks, and granted, and I've said it in the past, you know, the body of Christ is awesome, uh, but the only perfect part is the head because Jesus Christ is the head of the body of Christ. And therein lies perfection. The rest of the body is contaminated with people like you <laughs> and me. And yet, this is God's plan. And, and, and with it, his picture, he's, 
describing it there in this early church. This place devoted to God's instructions, uh, to, to uh, uh, fellowshipping with one another and uh, 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 participating in communion and prayer together to the point that uh, there's a feeling of awe among us uh, at God's workings. Folks, it wasn't the apostles. It was just happened. They, they happened to be leading the way. Um, uh, a sense of togetherness and commonality with generosity, a selfless sharing every day and everywhere experience to where God was genuinely praised and, and the community was impacted and it was vibrant and growing. That, that's what God wants for us. And it's actually what we want, but with it, individually, we must focus and desire on the concept of then communion and community. God's declaration, and I love sharing this with young people, you know, or older people, you know, getting married. And um, I, always, I like to ask them, you know, what's the first thing that, that was not good in the Bible? And a lot of times I say, well, you know, it was, um, um, you know, that was declared not good. Never put it that way. Uh, uh, and they'll say, well, sin. And I'll say, nope. And they'll say, well, was it, uh, you know, at that point they're usually at a loss. But folks, you know the creation story that is God uh, from the third or third day on, God kept looking and saying, and it was good, and it was good, and it was good. Uh, but the very first time that God looked and said, mm, not good, was when? When Adam was alone, folks. That in the garden, before Satan showed up, before the, 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 the partaking of the tr knowledge of the tree of the knowledge, that God said, mm, not good that the man should be alone. Folks, we were made social beings. Um, it is not good for us to be alone. Let me, uh, definition, alone, distant, isolated. Separated, not in touch. These are some of the concepts that go along with the word alone. Isolated, distant, separated, not in touch. We've had a year and a half of it. An emphasis on it. Rightfully so for health purposes. But let me declare this because I believe that God, once again, has made us social beings. That our pandemic necessity should not become our post-pandemic normal. And I'll say it again, our pandemic necessity shouldn't become our post-pandemic normal. Not pleasing to God, folks. And I know there's different personality types so that, that, you know, I, I, I can see that. <laughs> All right. But despite however it is you, by, that you are by personality and that is God's doing in your life. We've been created to be together. It's still not good for the human being to be alone. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 7 through 12, that again, oftentimes, uh, you know, in, uh, in dealing with people in marriage. But uh, uh, Solomon wrote this. He said, again, I saw something mean, meaningless or not well under the sun, that there was a man all alone. He had neither son nor brother, and there was no end to his toil, and, and yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. For whom am I toiling, he asked, and why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? This, too, is meaningless 
a miserable business. He's got nobody to share it with. Uh, he goes on. He goes on to say, "For two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor." Amen. That's the truth, you guys. It, it's nice to have a helper, even in the simplest of projects. It is so much better two than one. If either of them falls down, amen, and this, one can help the other up, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. So if you're going to be here at the church, you guys, and doing a, a work like Moise, um, and he's going to use a ladder, he wants somebody in the building. Doesn't have to be right there with him, but someone who's going to periodically check and make sure he hasn't fallen down. Amen? Right. I mean, it's just good. Two, also, if two lie down together, they can, will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Verse 12. Uh, Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Folks, there's, there's, there's strength. There's comfort, there's assistance, there's help, there's greater fruit. Uh, there's all kind of benefits to not being alone, not being isolated. That early church picture is a picture of, of the union and unity of the, of the early church. Amen, like a good meal. Folks, for me, a good meal is about provision and proximity. You know, I, I, I continue to eat <laughs> throughout COVID <laughs> and all its restrictions. But I missed having more people to share it with. I, I, I came, you know, uh, excited um, today about our tangible gathering. And some of you make some delicious little sweet treats. And I really enjoy that. But you know what I enjoy more than that is I enjoy you. I enjoy just being near you and around you. Though sometimes you rub me the wrong way. And I rub you the wrong way. And that's part and parcel, you guys, of coming together. It's impossible, amen, to come together, you know, not be in touch. I remember doing this with our, our leaders group. I asked them, who are you most likely to... Uh, uh, to be irritated with. Folks, put your hands together and, and, and do this. Keep rubbing. Rub faster and harder. Okay? It's the ones that you're most in contact with. Hence why family and, and marital situations <laughs> create some of the most intense irrit irritants. But you ought to expect it. It comes with being imperfect. And you know what? Every relationship that you're in, you bring part of the imperfection. Hopefully you have an attitude that I want to do better. I want to do better. I want to do better. Amen. And, you know, there's a, hopefully the other person is of a light mind and then, then, and then things get better. But, folks, it's still God's ideal. He knows our imperfection. He wants us in touch. As a matter of fact, therein lies the great doctrine of the incarnation of God. For the purpose of being in touch. Uh, I know you've heard me reference this story. I don't know uh, who, who created it, but it's a, a, a very good illustration of a little boy who 
was in the, his home, and, uh, but he was upstairs. And it was nighttime, and kind of like last night, uh, you know, when that uh, thunder starts uh, uh, booming and the, you hear the lightning cra- crackling. And, you know, you, and sometimes you wait for that <laughs> big impact. It's funny, it's, you know, you know, some of you can't help but jump. How many of you are jumpers? Okay, yeah, you, you can't help yourself, right? You know it's coming, <laughs> but you're still going to jump because you're right, because there is something awesome and kind of a little scary and uh, unnerving about a storm where the little boy is upstairs when it starts storming that way, he starts crying. So his mom comes up and, uh, you know, good Christian mom, and, you know, tucks them back in, and, and they have a word of prayer. And then she reminds them that, that Jesus, that, excuse me, that God is, is with him. That, you know, try to soothe him, and, and the little boy looks back at, at her and, 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 and simply says, um, well, I know that God's with me all the time, but I'd like somebody with skin on right now. Folks, how many of you like sometimes people with skin on? <laughs> In certain scenarios, don't we prefer somebody with skin on? That is the great in- doctrine of incarnation. That God with skin on is whom Jesus Christ is. That that's the level of, of touch. That God desires with us. That he became one of us in flesh, in skin. So that we could be close to one another. You guys, beyond just information to intimacy is God's idea. By showing up in skin. You know, if it were just a question of information, we know the information, we got facts here. It's beyond the information somehow to some intimacy. Um, You guys know, I'm, you know, look, I still write down on a piece of paper and highlight it and yellow and red, just like I've done for a long time. And and, and every so often, someone will really, you know, present to me, you know, the uh, the wonders of our technology. And at times, I almost feel what they're saying is, you know, this is what God was, has been waiting for to save the world. So they're going to get information out there. Folks, it's beyond information. It's about intimacy with God. And that requires closeness. That requires an intertwining. And this is God's idea with himself. And with his children. So we say, then come, unity. And come, unity. Genuine connection. And our willingness to work on it. All the time, everywhere, like the early church. Amen. Amen. So, folks, that's the early church. Hallelujah at its best. And I've lingered there because I like lingering on the positive. But I've got good news and bad news. 
And that is, uh, you know, that's the end of chapter 2, but right into chapter 3, you're going to start having conflict with those outside the body of believers, with the body of believers, and, okay? And it won't be real, real long before um, you hit chapter 5, and you're going to have um, uh, some internal problems within the body of believers, and, and you can go to... Uh, 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 chapter 6, and, and you've got even greater, yeah, you're, you're, you're starting to see within the body of Christ accusations of favoritism. All right. In other words, I'm thankful for the picture of that early church uh, in the state in which God desires for us to continually work at. But invariably, we're going to do it imperfectly. And I'm thankful that the word of God shows that. And um, so much so that in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let me show you the early church kind of at its worst. So much so that, listen to the way it starts in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17. Uh, the Apostle Paul, writing to believers at Corinth, says, In the following directives, I have no praise for you. And folks, he's telling them up front, I, I, I'm going to deal with something and, 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 and this ain't going to feel good. Folks, no one loves coming together and feeling good as much as Brother Ben. I, I kind of figure I get beat up enough in the world that I'd really rather not get beat up at church. But the truth is, at times, in our imperfection, amen, we need to keep working at it. And we need to be told, this is not good. And that's what the Apostle Paul has just said. In the following directives, I have no praise for you. For your meetings... Hence, coming together like this. Do more harm than good. Whoops. Folks, it's not just here. How many of you ever had a family meeting that turned out <laughs> with more harm than good? <laughs> okay. God bless and help us. So let's not. All right. This is our condition. In the first place, Paul writes, I hear that when you come together as the people of God, there are divisions among you. When we ought to be seeking come union, come unity. But folks, we are well capable, all of us are, of the opposite, of division. And he says, and to some extent, I believe it. <laughs> These are reports he's getting, and he, but he wants them to know that he, he, he believes it. What, among the church of God? Yes. He says, now this is a little bit of sarcasm. He says, hey, look, no doubt there have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. When you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper you eat. You might call it the Lord's Supper. But it don't resemble what God intended. For when you are eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. Folks, if you, listen, as a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. There's just excess as people are just into their own stuff, their own self. And can I tell you, that's the big dividing point between the church at its best and the church at its worst, is how we handle self. But there was both excess where, where some people weren't getting anything to eat. Other people were getting so much of the juice 
They were drunk. He says, don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Look, if you want to have a private affair, then just then you get to stay, you know, do it at home. That's where you're, you know, that's your castle, and you know you can do things, you know, um, the way you like. Amen. I love walking into a house and someone says, "Oh, do you mind taking your shoes off?" Nope. Nope. I don't mind. Matter of fact, let me do it right now for you. You know, in my house, we don't take our shoes off. You can. Just a preference thing. There's a lot, you know, we have a lot of preferences. And, uh, folks, in coming together, we have to deal with that stuff well. Um, well he, said, he asked the question, or, or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? Is it, is it that you have to flaunt what you have? Is it that you... Your selfish need to self-exalt and the opportunity to do so by pointing out who isn't as well off as you are. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter. Folks, that's the same people more or less, believers, at least, from what we read in Acts. But I'm telling you, the big dividing point, the big difference is the issue of self. That in Acts, there was a picture of selflessness. For the sake of communion and come unity. But here, among believers, for some period of time, they're not handling self well. They're not handling self well. They are being selfish. They're being driven by self-interest. And ultimately are interested in self-promotion. And folks, that's the barometer. That's the easiest way to, 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 to know that you're leaning more in the direction of what God desires versus in the direction that Satan desires, actually. And we're all prone to it. And our best defense is to be aware and to commit ourselves, devote ourselves to leaning in God's direction. Amen? His way. So, every day and everywhere, Lord, help me to deal with myself. Help me to go wherever it is that I'm going to go and whatever it is that, you know, whatever time of day it is, to have my mind set on how I'm going to be. To go to meet and greet, not so much with the idea of, well, it's kind of near lunchtime, and let's see how much I can get that makes, make it, makes it look like a lunch. Folks, this is not designed to be a luncheon. <laughs> Though the last couple of them, there was enough there that it was lunch for me. And I expect some nice treats out there. You guys, some of you are very talented, and I, and I enjoy it. And I've missed it. But God, help me. You know, my first thought is, i got to get over there fast before it's gone. <laughs> or, you know, I, I saw, uh, you know, so-and-so bring, you know, so, such and such. It happens to be my favorite. i got to hurry up and get over there. As opposed to thinking, dear God, this is an opportunity to meet and greet 
the people of God. Let me phrase it a different way. If you're driven by, let me see what I can get out of this, more than you are by, let me see what I can give to this, you're leaning this direction versus the God direction. Everywhere and at all times that you go. Let me see how I can be blessed. As opposed to, let me see how I can be a blessing. That's what we're talking about. So folks, let me see. Um, um, hospitality. Uh, someone with stars. Let's see if they have a star. Um, oh, oh, there's Jada right there. Okay. The idea, you guys, and we're going to read it together. Um, Britain, you have that verse, Psalm 147, I think it was, right? Verse 4. Folks, let's read this together. Ready? He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Now, the he here is God. And he has determined what we call an infinite number of, of stars, right? But he calls them each by name. Uh, hospitality took this verse, and you'll see it on the, on the bulletin board down the hallway. And that very nice display. I think they put lights around it. Hard to miss, okay? Um, and um, uh, hey, we want to thank Young Life. They came and painted that hallway for us. This past week. You won't notice it except if you say, hey, it looks cleaner because it's the same color. Okay? Um, but dear God, those young people don't know how to use a drop cloth. <laughs> Whew. Spent about three hours scraping up little drops of paint all over the place. But we thank you, Tucker Simmerman. <laughs> We're going to work on using drop cloth. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys uh, noticed on the board because there's stars there and those stars list our ministry partners our ministry partners you know like uh, 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 Lighthouse Youth Center and, and Young Moms and um, uh, the Bridge and you know all these various programs that we partner with there's about close to 15 of them because folks we're not just existing for ourselves Okay, and um, but hospitality, in keeping with this theme, has a star for you. Okay, and that star um, has a name, and your job is to find the person that that is um, representing, and introduce yourself. It's our way of forcing you <laughs> to meet one another. Because it's called meet and greet. Though it does have eat and eat to it. All right? Don't you think that's an awesome idea? Amen. God values each of those stars. He's, he knows them by name. Folks, God, help us to reflect that within the body of Christ, the value for each person individually. That will become, that will, that, that, that will become an attractive place, a vibrant place, a growing place, a blessing place to where God can add such as are saved daily. Amen. Let's stand. Sister Jetta, so uh, the stars are where right now? Okay. Okay, then, then let's see, Jetta, then I'm going to just, after I pray. 
Well, we can, okay, our elders and those who know you have not yet filled out a star should go first. So if for some reason you've not yet filled out a star with simply putting your name on it, Jetta, do those stars have first and last name? Okay, I'm just, amen, if, if, you, if your name, you know, if there's a six Johns, <laughs> um, amen, you get to meet all, you, you'll meet all of them, all right. <laughs> all righty, you guys, God help us to practice the instructions. That was the first, they devoted themselves to uh, the apostles' teachings. The t- apostles were teaching what Jesus had taught them. Amen. Um, we must practice what God's word says. We'll never reflect what God intended if we don't first and foremost devote ourselves to what he has instructed us. So folks, I know this makes some of you feel a little more uncomfortable. But that's part of dealing with self. It's to acknowledge, oh, this isn't my strongest you know, uh, tendency naturally, but hallelujah, for the sake of come union and come unity, I'm going to be a little less selfish. Can't hardly think of anything else to say. Amen. Precious Lord, thank you, dear God, for uh, every believer, Lord, that's in this building. Lord, I pray, Lord, for anyone who Uh, Lord, has not yet acknowledged your lordship in their life. Uh, Lord, it is as simple as feeling your tug, your Holy Spirit, Lord, upon our hearts and upon our minds and looking inward and upward and saying, Jesus, be the Lord of all. Surrender myself. I am a sinner. I need you. I need a savior and I need direction in my life. Lord, I pray that no one would leave without uh, having that clear understanding, Lord, within themselves. And Lord, that all who acknowledge you, Lord, would openly profess, uh, Lord, through the ordinance of baptism, that they are among the believers. Uh, So, Savior, if there's anyone here who believes but who's not been baptized, Lord, may they uh, just seek me out, dear God, and talk to me. Lord, there's no other requirement than their declaration that, yes, they believe in Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for placing us, Lord, among others. Lord, you're, you who made us know that it is not good for us to be alone. And Lord, the uh, uh, pandemic, dear God, dictated distancing and uh, isolation and a separation, Lord, for a season, for health purposes. And Lord, not that uh, the pandemic is totally over, Lord. So we continue to be mindful and respectful, uh, Lord, of uh, individual um, um, needs. But God, we acknowledge, Lord, that our cry has to be come union and come unity. And Lord, that will cause us to have to be less selfish, more selfless. Dear God, we struggle with that. Holy Spirit, we need you. We need your power, Lord, to live beyond ourselves. Lord, thank you for what you have already done in our lives. Lord, for that we can commend. Uh, But Lord, we need to keep working at it. Lord, lest we uh, lean too much in Satan's direction versus your direction. Lord, we thank you for this food. Uh, snack that we're about to receive. Uh, Lord, may we have a good time. Lord, blessing one another in genuine connection. Uh, Lord, in sharing and uh, talking uh, to one another. Lord, in meeting someone that uh, we've not yet met. Lord, with that, Lord, we thank you for this uh, service and we thank you for our uh, communion uh, and uh, community with you. Uh, Lord, now help us, dear God, 
uh, to better practice, Lord, uh, as the body of Christ. And Lord, then outside this place, uh, that our community would be impacted uh, for Jesus' sake. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Folks, God bless you. All right, so we're going to let our seniors to lead the way. Amen. If, if uh, you know you haven't filled out a star, uh, you want to go do that.